Jill, your second test now. Uh, it seems like you're coming into your own. Are you? Are you? How do you feel? You um, have you? Are you accustomed to to it a bit more than the Centurion? And how would you also rate or look back on your performance today? Yeah, I think um, coming into a team with such a world-class bowling attack makes it very easy. Um, so I could just fit right in. Um, been giving freedom to do what I do, which is great. Um, but yeah, like I said, if you look at the quality of bowlers we have, for me to come and just do my thing is easy. Without Anrich, yeah. Um, not necessarily. I think um, both Anrich and myself have that not like that role naturally. Um, if you look at the bowling attack today, I think that was my role, um, which I enjoy to do. It's which most naturally comes to me. So yeah, I think so. But I don't think it's because Anna wasn't here. If Anna played it, it would still be my role. <laughs> Yeah, I think um, not massive adjustments. I think both wickets, especially this one, is more like in the balance where the first wicket was very bowler prone or bowler friendly. Um, this wicket, if you bowled well, you would be rewarded. If you bowled badly, you would go for runs. So yeah, I think the boys bowled very well today and it showed. They also had a few good partnerships and credit to them. Yeah, I didn't know they're gonna come with the headbands, um, but that was very special. I mean, these people are the ones that made the sacrifices, not me. I mean, I love cricket. I could do my dream, and they're the ones who made time, who threw balls, who came on tours. So yeah, it was very special to see them there. Yeah. Gerald, as you've said, it's a very different pitch from what you had up there at the other day, and accordingly, South Africa's attack is is different with the two spinners. Um, I realise it's possibly a difficult thing to do, but which would you say is the stronger attack out of the two, and is it all down to the conditions? I think it's definitely conditions. I mean, if you've looked at the past, even the SA20, the wicket was turning here. So I think even in domestic four-day games, a lot of spinners have been taking wickets. So I don't think that, I think both are very strong. I think it comes down to conditions. I think come um, fourth innings when we go and bowl again, I think the spinners are going to play a massive role. So I think this is a very strong bowling attack. For this lineup, the guys who were left out, if they had to play, I think they would do equally as good a job. Are you looking forward to the rest of the fourth inning? Uh, the boys must bat first. With Kemba as, as your captain, um, what's it like to have Kemba as your captain in the field and then before your debut? Uh, for this test match, did you have any to say to you? Yeah, Timba is a very um, relaxed captain, which I appreciate and enjoy. He allows the bowlers to express themselves, which is the cliche used, um, which is what you, in a sense, want from a captain. He, there is a basic plan, and then it's up to the bowler, and he trusts the bowler with their skill to execute the plan, um, which is great. I think he's a, he's a good captain. Oh yeah, sorry. Um, not really. Just uh, well done, but nothing really. I think the general message from Temba and the coaching staff was just do what you've been doing. Yeah. Of course, we're going to go Hines, then Keane, then Mal, then Kiso, and then we'll tick off how we do for time. Okay. Yeah. Gerald, um, <clears throat> like you said, you know, it's a bit like a whirlwind of experiences, you know. Um, at this level, but um, even though you had a very successful day, was it also useful for you per se to also experience that frustrating period with that last wicket partnership? You know, because sometimes it really does require clarity of thought, a bit of patience. Did you sort of like find, even though it didn't necessarily get out of control, that you know that was a valuable experience for you as a young test cricketer? Yes, of course. I don't think it's the last time it'll happen. They batted, Jason batted um, very well, and credit to him. And yeah, I think that last partnership. If you ask any cricketer if it's a 50 run partnership, it's, it's tough to deal with it. Um, luckily, we still have a good lead, um, so we'll take that. I mean, 70 run lead is better than a 70 run deficit, so yeah, 
it was it was tough, <laughs> but good experience. Okay. <coughs> uh, Bob Alger, another career best for you. Hey. Um, you just. Uh, on that last week of partnership, what was the sort of talk out there in the middle? How, how are you guys um, dealing with it? As you said, it's always a hell of a frustrating thing uh, to have to sit up there for an hour or so. I think in general, in that situation, you want to try and get the main battle off strike and then bowl as, much, as many balls possible to the, to the tail ender. But I mean, he held his ground well. Um, Jason was taking the game forward. So yeah, in, if it went perfectly, you get chasing off strike and you bowl to, to either of the tail enders and get the wicket. Yeah. Wow. Um, Gerald, just obviously having seen you put in a lot of hard yards on tours and not having played, I just wonder if you could talk about that the experience and, and what you got out of that and having been on those long tours and having to wait. Does, has that made this, this first couple of tests more special? Yes. And it's made it a lot easier. I, have, I went to the Australia tour with a very good bowling attack. Um, and just to be there and learn was exactly what I needed. I went there as a backup bowler, which was what I expected was not necessarily to be picked first, but just to be there in the nets in the game, to see how they do it, to see how they go about it, to see the next level has definitely added to my growth. And coming here and knowing what is expected at the standard has been a great help and it's made it a lot easier. Thank you, sir. General, uh, Rob Bold. Thank you. From a test match day like this, where there's a lot of two wicket throwing, uh, good balls that don't get wickets, bad balls that get wickets, what did you learn from a day like this as a fighting test cricket? I think what you learn is that you still want to bowl your best ball as many times as possible. If you bowl a uh, ball that's not necessarily your best ball and you get a wicket that's always a bonus and that does happen and I think it can happen because there is pressure over a long time and then suddenly there's a release shot and the batsman might score a, like he might hit a boundary but he might also go out because he hasn't been hasn't received um, a bad ball in a while but yeah I mean this level the less you miss the better you are if you look at the best pace bowlers in the world right now they can do the same thing over and over again so I think that's what we all strive for. disrespectful to anyone. Um, when you observed a moment, a minute's silence this morning for Joe Domensky, have you ever heard of Joe Domensky? Honestly, no, I have not. Um, which is something I'll probably look into, see who he was. I, I have no idea. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Gerald, is the KD okay? Is he in ball match? Do they uh, just follow him? Is he getting anything? Or is it easy? No, KD is good. Um, a bit of stiffness, but as we all have a bit of stiffness, you get it treated and um, before it becomes something serious, but then you come back and you do it again. No, KG is good. And just realistically, what you guys looking to want to bowl at uh, hopefully tomorrow? No, I don't know. Um, I'll, I'll, get back to, I'll get back to you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the Afrikaans antwoord. Sy het afgekom of opgegaan Pretoria of Pretoria toe, maar toe ongelukkig was die toets klaar. So, <laughs> so ja, sy het nog nie gekijkie, um, maar ja, ons hoop, hoop die vers in die toekomst. Sy sy is ook. Nee, sy, sy swaad, finale jaar, um, so ja, ons wil eerder eens in my deur kom. Thank <laughs> you.